All right, welcome back to Sidewalks Entertainment. Richard here, and I have a familiar, I guess you could say face. <laughs> familiar head and face, yeah. Familiar head and face. This is David Fielding. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Of course, when we're talking the face, we're talking Morty Ma Morty. <laughs> Mighty, Mighty, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yeah, yeah. I can't even say that. I was getting more worried about saying your last name wrong. Oh, no I get worries, the, no worries. You, of course, you Zordon. Uh, yeah, yeah, the uh, mentor, first leader of the Power Rangers. So, yeah, yeah, all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is your fault. It you is. put them in a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm humans. probably responsible for a lot of broken lamps and coffee tables and all that stuff, so I apologize. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So let's, uh, before we get into the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger, uh, tell us a little bit about you. Uh, where are you from? Um, How'd you get started in this crazy business? <laughs> um, well, um, I'm just a regular guy. My, my father was in the Air Force, so we traveled a lot as kids. And uh, I grew up reading uh, a lot of pulp fiction, comic books, so I was very drawn to um, the performative nature of things. And when I got into junior high and high school, I got very interested in acting. So um, I made a decision early on in my life that that's what I wanted to do. I went to college for it. Uh, I got a BFA in acting and I got an MFA in acting. And when I went out to Los Angeles, um, uh, I had only been in LA for about a couple of months when I got a call to do an audition for uh, a TV pilot. and. Um, I had thought that you know it was going to be like any cattle call audition that there would be 15,000 other people. I'd go in there, read my lines, and go home and never hear anything. But when I got down there that night, uh, it was just me and another gentleman. And they said, we're going to cast it tonight and shoot it next week. Are you available? And I said, yeah, I'm available. And luckily enough, I was the one they chose. And it turned out to be this show. And it Just like that. That's yeah. The thing. And it was a real lucky bolt of lightning kind of thing. And uh, it was a wild experience and very surreal in a way to be attached to a property that's become such a pop culture phenomenon. So, yeah, I mean, it's amazing. There's yeah. like uh, we're uh, uh, talking to other Power Rangers over the years. I mean, there's so many of them. Yeah, there's. Uh, I mean, it, it's been a tradition in, Jap in Japan for a long time. The Sentai series has been uh, since like the early '70s, and so there's this long, rich history of. Uh, tokusatsu uh, shows, uh, transformative heroes with giant robots and fighting rubber monsters, and um, I love that stiff, you know, stuff growing up. Uh, Ultraman, Spectre Man, Godzilla, all that yeah. stuff. That so being a part of that tradition and being able to meet the actors that were on those shows, that were part of our shows, um, it it's a great worldwide community that really just loves this thing. So it's a great thing to be a part of. So when they were shooting it, were you just pretty much, did you have to put your head somewhere or how were they doing it? Yeah, I mean, well, Power Rangers, uh, the the uh, the hook for yeah. Power Rangers is they, they would take these Japanese shows and use like 11 minutes of the fight footage and stuff, recycle that and mix it in with new American footage. So when it came to my character, they only filmed me one time. And then recycled that footage over and over, and never Is had it? to. Yeah, and never had to pay me for it. So it was pretty sweet. Well, but I mean, uh, it was the same sort of mindset of being able to take something that they did once, and then reuse it over and over again throughout the entire life of the character. And I would just go in and do voices after that. So yeah. But you 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 did say other things during the episodes, right? Or Right. I mean, they would just use the same footage because Zordon is, is on the screen for such a limited amount of time. It's very brief. I did not even know that. And if, if you watch, I mean, they, they fuzz out his mouth so you never really see his lips move. So I was able to go in and just deliver whatever, di yeah, whatever dialogue was needed for the episode uh, and they just plugged it right in. And, and when you're five, you don't notice that thing. You're just like watching it and enjoying it. Uh, but you know, I've had fans come up and ask me, he's like, why were your lips never moving? I was like, well, this is the reason why. And so from a business standpoint, it was really smart on their port to, uh, you know, uh, as a cost saving measure. And stuff. From an actor's standpoint, it really kind of sucked. But So you, you only got paid for that pretty much in one session? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. the voiceovers. And then the voiceovers, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now wait, what about the movie? Uh, were you in the, I, forgot. I was not. Uh, they had contacted me. I had gotten a phone call uh, when they were going to film the movie in Los Angeles, but since they decided to save money and film it in Australia, they hired a local actor down there. Which is why Zordon doesn't in the movie doesn't look like Zordon from the TV show. Yeah, 
Oh, that's interesting. Movie magic. Movie, Movie magic. magic. Yeah. So, uh, and it, the strange thing is that you, when people see you, they know you from the hat. Yeah, yeah. It's it's very strange to know that uh, my face is a collective part of people's childhood and. You know, I've I've seen people that have had my face tattooed on their legs, and it's <laughs> it's very strange to know that it's has has been that much of an impact. So yeah. But the character also appeared, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not the major uh, Power Rangers uh, encyclopedia here, but yeah. it appeared on other episodes of the other series. Yeah, uh, the I mean, character lasted up through Power Rangers in Space, uh, so I think that was like five seasons. And you still didn't do any more for that, other than the voiceover? No, over. no, uh, they never filmed the character again. It was just uh, the voice that was done, so yeah. That just ruined it for me for watching. <laughs> it's like, wow, now I'm going to be disappointed watching it. <laughs> hey, uh, oh, I'm not going to say it, but... <laughs> You also, as a write, you've been writing. I'm a writer. Yeah, yeah. When I left Los Angeles, um, I uh, went to work in uh, the video game industry. I, I did uh, QA and design work for a number of companies, and uh, I'd always been very creative. Always been writing uh, short stories, and I had a whole catalog of stories that had been stuffed into my drawer that I had started and never really finished. And um, about. Fifteen years ago, I started to say, well, if I'm going to do this, I really want to do it. And I finished a bunch of my stories and started sending them out and started to get, like, rejections. And and then every now and then I would get something that was like, yeah, we want to pick this up. We want it to. So I started to get published. And then I self-published my superhero novel, Vigilance, mm -hmm. and uh, continued to send out more short stories and to different anthologies. And more and more of them got picked up got more confident, and then uh, I wrote a, a, a paranormal urban fantasy novel uh, with a character that I created, um, and it captured the attention of, a, of an independent publisher, and they say, we want to put this out. So we've been working on that for the last two years, and it should be coming out uh, end of September this year. Oh, nice. So uh, we just need to finalize the cover art for it and be done with it, and then I'll be out there and possibly doing some book signing somewhere, so that'll be great. We have a, a project that we're doing. It's not a Power Ranger project. Okay. Uh, what we did, it's called The Order, and we're producing it. But what I, what we did and what my company did is we said, I just feel like, like you said, all of us still look good. All of us are still working. We're all working actors. I wanted to see us in a different light. I wasn't like, let's not suit back up and be Power Rangers, but let's do a different type of movie. So we're actually doing an action film. It is not Power Rangers. It's not a kid film. It's violent. And, but I did cast 15 former Power Rangers to be in this movie because wow. I feel like they're some of the most talented people I've ever known. And, and, and when, you, when you produce and when you think about that, you always have to think about who do I want to be stuck with? for weeks on end, 12 hour days, in the trenches, trying to create a movie. Who do you want to be stuck with? You want to be stuck with some really cool people. So we hired my friends. <laughs> so can you name some of the people that's involved? Yeah, um, Austin St. John, David Yost, David Fielding. David Fielding and I actually co came up with the concept and we co-wrote the was, script. Uh, if I remember, he Zordon, was, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, there's a ton, um, Nakia Baris, Catherine Sutherland, Aaron Cahill. But what I really love is it's not just Mighty Morphin. We picked some people throughout the whole, you know, history of Power Rangers. So you can get newer people, older people, people we've never all worked together and been on the same set. So it'll be a lot of fun when we get this movie produced and get it done. We talked to uh, uh, Karen Ashley. Uh, yeah. She was saying she was producing a, uh, a project called The Order. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're involved with it. You helped co-write it, co-create it? I, I co-wrote uh, co it with Karen. Um, Karen is is very vibrant and she's my little ball of sunshine. Is and she really? I oh, don't know. Well, yeah, she's yeah, so awesome. She's, she's <laughs> so, and and we have a really great, wonderful working relationship. We bounce things off of each other and 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 just love a lot of the same things. So we got along really well and we worked on the script for a good three months and tried to hone it. Uh, as best as we could and we're both very nervous when we took it to the other guys and asked them if they wanted to be a part of it and everybody loved it which uh, excited us and um, so we're yeah we're really working on trying to help get that finished and get out so yeah now are you gonna have a row in it I, I do. Uh, I'm. <laughs> Are you gonna have more than? <laughs> uh, I have more than a head. Yeah. yeah um, all right. <laughs> uh, the order is a is a team of highly motivated, highly skilled, uh, highly talented individuals who do the jobs out in the world that other people 
can't do or are unable to do. Uh, they're not affiliated with any sort of government or any other spy agency, but they they find themselves in some very hot spots and trying to trying to keep the balance in the world so things don't tip too much towards evil or too much towards good. Um, and uh, I'm part of the uh, uh, the council team that oversees them. So yeah. Well, okay. Make sure you get a, a Rose a Rowan in your own project. Yeah, Don't yeah, cheat yeah. yourself. Make yourself work one day. <laughs> well, uh, I'm always nervous when I see myself on camera. So yeah, no, we'll, you'll, we'll be yeah. you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You know, there's a lot of people out here watching it. Uh, this. Do you have any career advice for people about getting into the business and and not falling in a way of just getting one line and <laughs> use your face over and over? <laughs> um, you have to do it because you love it. Uh, I mean, if you have aspirations of celebrity, that that's fine. Just don't expect it. I mean, it's it's a long, hard grind, and and some people find out right away that it's not for them, uh, like I did. I there were certain parts of the industry that I knew that I would have to, uh, cert I would have to give up certain parts of me that I wasn't comfortable giving up, and so um, I decided to concentrate on. The other creative part of me, which was creating content rather than being the content, and um, but if if you have aspirations to be in front of the camera or directing behind the camera, producing, uh, it's it's something you really have to love and you have to work at it every day. And don't look at every rejection as a no. It it just means that somebody saw you and you just weren't right at that moment and just keep pushing and keep grinding keep walking down the sidewalk and eventually somebody will say that's what I want to do and um, try to get try to get around you people that are of like mind and um, the one thing that I wasn't taught in school that I wish that they would have taught us is the importance of networking and and being kind to people because you never know who's going to open a door for you and eventually you'll meet somebody who will be in your corner they'll stand up for you and they'll put you first and uh, you never know who that person's going to be so be nice be kind and always try to pay it forward well i like the part you could keep it on the sidewalk <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for doing this yeah. and uh, thank you for the little insight and sure. when i watch uh, power rangers again i'm going that's the same. Line over and over. No wonder. Yeah. But yeah, thank yeah. you very much, and thank you for supporting us. Still, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm glad to come out. Yeah. All right, David Fielding, everybody. We would like to thank uh, Power Rangers. Uh, we can say Power Rangers. Uh, Karen Ashley and David Fielding uh, for both for appearing on the show. Thank you both of you for doing this interview uh, with us. All right, from all of us here at Sidewalks, Justin Shooting, Lori, Rebecca, Hector, everybody, thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs>